Hello drone racers. Today we're going to take a look at a $25 FreeSky controller. It's not technically FreeSky, but it is FreeSky compatible. And it's not totally FreeSky compatible, it's FreeSky D8 compatible. But that still covers an awful lot of models, so I think this is going to be a really interesting fit for a whole bunch of people. I first learned about this radio because it came with the DYS Elf, which I've reviewed, but mine didn't come with one. And now that I saw this was available separately, and it's only $25, I had to get one just to give it a try. Because if you can get this to fly with a lot of the FreeSky compatible models, that would be a pretty amazing deal if it is not garbage. So for the first part of the review, I'm gonna say, if you can afford it, just get one of these instead. Just get the Tyrannus QX7, especially you can pick the colors you want. It's about it's $110, so 25 versus $110. It is a lot cheaper, but this is a million times more versatile. So this is a good deal if you're just getting started and you want something to fly inside and do different things with. But if you want to fly long term, skip this, just get this. But we'll keep reviewing this in the meantime. I've already added the four AA batteries that it needs, so it's pretty easy to do. And I'll say the weight and the feel of it and the balance, it has a nice finger grip around the back here. It has a good feel. It might be... A little high, I feel like I want to hold it down here, so these are my palm, but that's not too bad. I wish these were a little bit different. This is where my thumbs naturally want to sit, but it's not bad. It, it would work for me. If you had really big hands, it might be a problem because you might have to hold it all the way down here, but it's really not bad. I'm right at six foot tall, so to give you an idea of size. It has four switches on it, and it has two two-way switches and three three-way switches. So it's already better than the Fly Sky I just got because I've got more versatility there, and I've got both on both sides. So it's a really nice little layout. DYS. Throttle high, so it does give you a warning on throttle high, which is kind of nice. Now you heard that beeping, that is all the audio you get. There is not a lot of customization, but it does come preset for a quadcopter and ready to go. It does show you your throttle stick, which is nice. You have controls for fine tuning your trim, which you probably don't want to use. I know I noticed it doesn't give you a different audio on center, which I always like. I think I'm center there. Well, it gives you your power time and your voltage for the control. It is backlit too, which you know I wouldn't have expected, but with the backlight screen, it's pretty easy to see. In programming, we have monitor, reverse, channel map. I can You can do dual rates and expo and set that up on the radio and you can do mixing and then basic setup and version. So I will just go through here. Monitors just takes you to the channel monitor so you can see what's going on. Reverse, you can reverse your switches. Channel map we'll get back to in just a minute. DR and Expo. So if you need to set DR and Expo, you're using this for a heli or a plane, which I doubt anybody's going to do. This is just a quadcopter radio. You can do it, though. Along with custom mixes, V-tail mix. So if you want to use this for a lot more than it's originally intended, I think, you can, it's very versatile with the programming. Not super easy to do. Channel, so there's the bind, so you can bind it and you can turn off and on this key tone if you want and do a factory reset. And then version, it'll show you what's installed. I don't know if there's a way to upgrade it. There's no ports or anything on this, so I don't know if you can change that, but we'll see. Going back into channel map now, the first thing you'll notice is it is Aeron Elevator Throttle Rudder. It's A-E-T-R, which is not standard for most Free Sky receivers. Most Free Sky receivers are set up for T A E R. I will say, if I had to do it again, I would just set all of my Free Sky transmitters to be A T R because that seems to be the default in Betaflight and Clean Flight and everywhere. I would have just set that on the radios and gone. So, if this is your very first radio, just leave it like this. And then when you do upgrade to a real Tyrannus, just set it day one to A T R and you'll be good to go. The other thing I appreciate, if I didn't mention it, is this is an eight channel receiver, which is really nice. Six channels is not enough for drones, I don't think. You end up running into limitations. This is eight channels, which is just enough. I really want seven. I can get by with six, I want seven. Eight is even better. And they've already set up these switches. So switch goes on channels five, six, seven, and eight. Ready to go right out of the box. You don't have to mess with it and redo things over and over. It's just ready to go right out of the box. I have my Isheen E10S here, which has been one of my most popular indoor flyers. I've got a whole bunch of videos about it. So this is the one that I would say, can you get this and bind it to this? And that's what we want to find out. This one is a little bit unique. It does have a bind button on the front. So I'm going to push that bind button, which just happens to line up with the camera. So if I 
press down the camera, it holds down the bind button, and then I can power on. There we go, so that's in bind mode. Now here, I'll go into setup and bind, and my light changed here. I don't know if you could see that, but it bound. So now, turn that off, turn it back on. There you can see I'm actually connected and I have a receiver signal strength. That's really nice. There's not a lot of telemetry here, but even just having that is really nice. So now the question is, can I do anything here? There's, there I'm armed, no. So I think the problem is this is in T-A-E-R, this is in A-E-T-R. Let's take a look in Betaflight. Okay, so in Betaflight, we're gonna go look at the receivers tab and hey, look, it's going crazy. That's because, as I mentioned, I'm on T-A-E-R. I don't wanna change this because I wanna be able to fly this with my other radios that are all set to there. So now we've gotta actually fix this in the radio first. In order to do that, you go into the radio here and in the channel map, it's pretty easy. So um, we want it T-A-E-R. So this should be on two. So I just press one, enter to go to two and then hold down enter to change it to channel two. Now I just have ailerons mapped to two different channels, so that's no good, so now we do down arrow. So it's T-A-E, so E should be on three. Hold down, then we go down again to throttle, circle through all the way to channel one, hold down. So now we have T-A-E-R, and it should work. So now, hey look, it just fixed itself right away. So now we have flight, <laughs> we have throttle, throttle works. Uh, we have battery, we're armed, so there's the arm switch and my mode switch, all set. These are the defaults that I already had on the quadcopter. So we have flights. The center points don't look bad, they're really, really close. One last thing before we fly it. This throttle percentage is tied to the channel number, not the one it sees as the throttle. So now that percentage actually doesn't work, it's messed up. Um, it's going to be stuck at 51%. I, that's the one flaw I've seen in it so far. But everything works. You just won't be able to rely on that because it thinks it's over here in, in a different mode. But it's not. It still works here. still does what I want. Okay, so this is a radio test and not necessarily a quadcopter test because I had to update Betaflight on this in order to be able to even go in and show you the receiver settings and... This thing is all screwed up right now. So the quadcopter, the E10S, needs some help. But to test and see if the radio works, it still works just fine. Whoa, the rates are all messed up. So the quadcopter, don't my don't judge my bad flying skills or my son just had a birthday and got all kinds of Hot Wheels. But does the radio function? And it does, it functions just fine. If this had come out of the box and was tuned properly, I could be zipping all around without any problem at all. The gimbals feel good enough. They're nice and smooth. I don't have any problem with them at all. And uh, that definitely works. So now the big question I have is what's the range on this thing? For that, we're gonna have to do some different testing. Okay, I have the frog ready to go for a range test here. This is with the Tyrannus radio. So we're just gonna go down. I know at the end of this path, it's a uh, 200 telemetry meters lost telemetry recovered so even with the tyrannus i lost signal a little bit i've got good video though if i look that direction so i'm telemetry lost all right so i'm gonna recovered. see if i can turn back so i can make it right telemetry at lost. 200 telemetry meters recovered. with the tyrannus and there we go so there's the flying frog with the tyrannus 200 meter range but lots of complaining Okay, I have rebound it now to the DYS controller. So we're gonna do the same test here. I did test fail safe, just so you know, because I don't want this to fly away in a fail safe situation. So we are recording, we are watching, we are flopping all over the place. Whoa, I have lost control. Oh, there we go. It's gone. So not a long range at all with this. We need to go get it. The DYS ELF controller. Technically, it's just a free Sky D8 controller, but should you buy one? It depends. If you're just getting started and you're only planning on flying tiny whoops inside, absolutely buy this in a heartbeat. Buy an E10S and one of these, and you have a great setup. That's, I, I need to do a roundup because this totally changes everything for how to get started. If you're gonna be flying micro brushless outside within 100 meters or so, 
it's maybe okay. Um, I got about 100 meters away from my house before I lost control. Now, that's with the frog, which is not a great receiver anyway, and I was starting to get timeouts with the Tyrannus too. So the biggest difference was how it recovered. This didn't recover on the edge of that signal as well as the Tyrannus did. Tyrannus was complaining, but still flying. This just stopped flying. Part of that's probably due to the frog. That's not the best model to test it with, but that's part of the problem is it has to be a D8 receiver. You can get super cheap D8 S-Bus receivers now that are from third parties that this would interact with perfectly. And if you're staying within that 100 meters, it would be just fine for, I think. But I think this is the killer solution for people getting started with Tiny Whoops. That's, that's the, what this is. Because if I didn't mention it, it's only $25. It's ridiculously cheap for what you get here. Oh yes, also, I just got a question about how many models you could pair with it. And this, as far as I can tell, only has one model. But it also doesn't support model match. So that's good and it's bad. You can bind this with all of your receivers, all of your drones. And as long as you only plug one of them in, you're fine. Just don't plug more than one in. That's the cardinal rule if you're using this with multiple models. But the setup that you're going to use on this is going to be the same on every model, so it will work. Just make sure when you bind it with multiple models, you only ever power one of them on at a time. One model at a time. If you found this useful, give it a like. And if this is your first video, go ahead and subscribe so you can see all of our updates in the future. Until next time, remember, it's only $25!